Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at solving the simultaneous equation. So before we do that, I just want to talk a little bit about what we've actually got going on here. Now basically you'll recognise that this is a straight line and this is the equation of a circle. Now the reason I know that is because not only have I got an x squared term but also I've got a y squared term and actually this is r squared. This is the radius squared. So actually if I want to know the radius of this circle I just simply square root 2 which is about 1.4 something like that. So effectively what we've got is a circle with a radius of roughly about 1.4 if you like the root of 2 and we've got a straight line that goes through it and what we're trying to establish is the point at which they intersect the circumference and the straight line and that's what we're going to try to look at at the moment. Okay so the way that we normally do that is we use something called substitution and what that means is taking the value of y and plugging it straight into the second equation. So rather than writing x squared plus y squared equals 2 what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x squared plus and rather than y squared, 1 minus 2x, all squared equals 2. So all I've simply done is I've taken that value of y and plugged it straight into the equation. And then really all we're going to do is we're going to solve for the value of x. So get the value of x, and then when we've got that, we can find the value of y. Okay, so let's have a look at expanding this. So I'm going to get x squared plus and 1 minus 2x squared is exactly the same as saying 1 minus 2x multiplied by 1 minus 2x and again that all equals 2. Don't forget that equals 2 at the very end. Okay, so let's expand this out a little bit further. So I'm going to get x squared plus, so I've got 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times minus 2 is going to be minus 2x, another minus 2x and then don't forget a minus times a minus is a positive so I've got plus 2x times 2x is plus 4x squared that equals 2. Okay so I need to put this now into a format where I can factorize it so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to gather up the like terms so I've got 4x squared and x squared pull those together I'm going to get 5x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x and then I've got plus 1. Now don't forget that when you're factorising you need to make sure that it's equal to 0. So what I have to do is I bring this 2 over into the equation and that's going to be minus 2 so I've got plus 1 minus 2 is going to be minus 1 and that all equals 0. So now we've got an equation that we can actually factorise 4x. Okay, now there's a couple of different methods of doing this. I do it my particular way. I'm sure there are other ways um, in which your teachers might have shown you, but my particular way is to say, well, I've got 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. And then I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them together will make minus 5. And when I add them together will make minus 4. Well, those two numbers are going to be minus 5 and plus 1 because minus 5 times plus 1 is minus 5 and minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4. Okay so I can now look at this equation and rewrite it in a slightly different way. The way I'm going to write it is going to be 5x squared and rather than writing minus 4x I'm going to put minus 5x plus 1x minus 1 equals zero. So the only thing I've changed are these two become minus 4x. Okay, now the next, uh, the next process with this is to factorise the first two terms. And what we're looking for is for a common factor of the first two terms and the second terms. Probably easier to demonstrate than it is to actually explain. But if we look at this, I can factorise that for 5x and I get x minus 1. OK, so those two terms I can factorise like that. 
The second two terms I can factorise for plus 1, and guess what? I get x minus 1. OK, so now I've got two common terms, x minus 1. So I can rewrite this whole thing as 5x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1, and that equals 0. OK, so it looks like we might now have the values of x, because what we can say is that when x minus 1 equals 0, then that must mean that x equals positive 1, OK? So if I set this to 1, I've got x minus 1 equals 0, so therefore x equals 1. Same with, um, just getting rid of that bit, I've got 5x plus 1 equals 0. Well, if I bring this one over, I'm going to get x equals minus 1 fifth. OK, now if you're not sure about how to do those, definitely please have a look at some of the other videos um, in the playlist and on the channel, and it will give you a little bit more experience with how to go from that to that but it is a very much a key area that you'll need to be able to do for these sorts of questions okay so now at long last i've got my two values of x so what we're saying is is that in this particular case x is equal to one okay so that would be one and then x is equal to minus one fifth okay and then really i can take those numbers and plug them straight into this equation at the top to figure out the value of y. So I've got y equals 1 minus 2x. Well, that's fine. I can just plug in the 1. I get 1 minus 2 times 1. OK, well, that's going to mean that y is going to equal to minus 1 because 1 minus 2 is going to be minus 1. OK, so in this particular case, y is over here at minus 1. OK, and then the final one is going to be this value of X where I can plug that in and I can say, well, Y is going to equal one minus two times minus one fifth. OK, a little bit awkward because what we've got is minus two times minus. That's going to be a positive. So what I'm going to end up is Y equals one plus two fifths. OK, two times a fifth is going to be two fifths. OK, so one plus two fifths is going to be one and two fifths. OK, or if you prefer, I can write that as seven over five. Or if you prefer a decimal, I could write that as one point four, couldn't I? OK, so any of those is absolutely fine. Doesn't really matter. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to use this over here to say that when x is minus one fifth, then y is going to equal to uh, one and two fifths. OK, so therefore I've got my two coordinates. My first coordinate is this one and this one. So it's going to be one and minus one. And then my second coordinate is going to be this one and this one, which is going to be minus one fifth and seven over five. OK, sorry about my awful writing. It hasn't really improved over the years. OK, so I hope that's been OK for you. Please do have a look at some of the other videos within the playlist. These particular ones are really quite challenging and I'm going to be posting a few more of these in the next few days. I hope it's useful to you. Please add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.